Newtons, he's materializing right here in our studios here at 620 Mass Ave in Cambridge. Beaming from 7,000 miles up there, it's Mr. Sulu. Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? Good to be here with you, Doug. Does that uh, really shake up your molecules when you do that all the time? Does it shake up my molecules? Oh, yeah, when you materialize from 7,000 feet. Something that we do all the time, regularly. You're used yeah. to that, huh? Oh, yeah. It's not We're too true. much different than what you do here uh, in your day and age, uh, <laughs> flying in jet planes. I don't know. It seems, uh, it seems it would shake my molecules up quite a bit. But well, I guess you're used to it sometimes. there. It's sometimes. It's invigorating. <laughs> Shakes out some of those uh, old uh, aged molecules there and makes you kind of, you know, cleansed and invigorated. I understand that you are in command of your own starship now. You're no longer, well, of course, it was many years ago that you were helmsman on the USS Enterprise. But in the past few years, you have uh, moved on up to your own Starfleet command. That's pretty impressive in just seven years. Ah, oh, how amusing your uh, time references. Yes, I guess <laughs> we'd better uh, move, uh, uh, shift my thinking into your Earth time, uh, 20th century time reference. Uh, yes, uh, since you uh, knew me last, I've moved on to become the captain of my own uh, starship. And uh, uh, the reason why I can come down here, actually, and leave uh, the starship is because uh, I have had uh, an accident on board the ship, and uh, I'm on medical leave temporarily right now. And that's why I have this pleasurable thing of uh, dashing back and forth in time and space and visiting with you. Uh-huh. Do you have a, a medical officer as qualified on board as Dr. McCoy was on the uh, Enterprise? Well, I'll tell you, you know, uh, Dr. McCoy is uh, retired since uh, oh, okay. our return from the five-year mission. But uh, I'm kind of fond of old uh, bones there, and <laughs> so uh, I've asked him to come out of uh, retirement. He's uh, my personal uh, physician attending me. Tell me, back in the old days when you were with uh, James Kirk and uh, Mr. Spock and the old uh, gang on the Star Trek USS ah, yes. Enterprise, what was one of your more exciting adventures for you personally on board? One of my more exciting adventures? Well, I, I was pretty um, uh, shaken up when it seemed like I might not make it back up on board the Enterprise when we were down on a planet. Uh, uh, really sub-freezing temperature and... Uh, that was one of the few moments when I felt awfully insecure about that whole thing, but uh, our transporter uh, was uh, repaired in time and uh, got back uh, intact, fortunately. Uh -huh. Oops. I just became disconnected there for a second, but I'm back. Oh, uh, one of these primitive <laughs> instruments that you have here. These primitive uh, headphones, you don't have to worry about that, I guess, and the century you you work and live in. Oh, I find it very quaint and amusing to see how uh, you did it in the, these days here in the 20th century. What is it? Uh, late uh, 20th century, 1976, and uh, as I understand it, you're celebrating some memorial of some kind uh, here in uh, Boston. A memorial. I think uh, you might be referring to the 200th birthday of the United States. Ah, yes, yes, that's right. I'm a little shaky on uh, your history of uh, this, that portion of uh, the globe, uh, Earth. Uh, that's right, you are celebrating your 200th uh, founding, aren't you? That's right, I imagine the textbooks are, are fairly yellowed from when you're reading well, the history books. Well, they turn kind of uh, purple out there, actually. <laughs> Age has a strange way of working on our, uh, our uh, material up there. Well, Mr. Sulu, it's been very nice chatting with you, and uh, we'll be back talking with the alter ego of Mr. Sulu after these messages. Good to be here. It's 25 minutes before 3 o'clock. Of course, we're talking with George Takei, who played Mr. Sulu back on Star Trek in the late 60s. Once again, welcome you down. George, thanks for coming down. Good joining you here, Don. Of course, uh, you're in town this week for the Star Trek convention that's happening over at the Sheraton Boston. That's right. This promises to be one of the big ones. As a matter of fact, uh, I think this is the first uh, Star Trek convention being held uh, here in Boston or in uh, New England, for that matter. So uh, it should be a good experience. I'm looking forward to it. And it's going to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Is that correct? That's right. Four-day convention. Uh, four days of uh, bacchanalia. How long have you been participating in the Star Trek conventions? Have they been going on for a few years now? Well, they started, I get, you know, actually this phenomenon is uh, picked up a couple years after uh, uh, the cancellation of the show. Mm -hmm. And I must say, I am really incredulous at the way this uh, thing has uh, uh, caught on. 
The first one I was amazed by. Uh, I think they gathered together something like about, uh, oh, five or six hundred people in Los Angeles. That following year, the uh, people in New York uh, organized one. They expected a few hundred, and they got 3,000. And uh, when I first experienced that, I was just stunned to see that uh, there were that many people that were still interested in a show that had been canceled, uh, I guess by that time it was about three years. And uh, it's, this phenomenon has been growing and growing. As a matter of fact, this year, I think there was one uh, in New York that gathered together something like 30,000 people. No kidding. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm really amazed at what, what can happen. It was a good show. I thought it was an extraordinary show in many respects. Uh, but I never suspected that this kind of thing would happen with it. Is it the first one here in Boston? First one here in Boston. Uh, there have been others... Uh, on the uh, northeastern uh, seaboard, and many people from Boston have come down uh, to those, primarily in New York. Uh, there was another one in uh, Florida last weekend, and uh, there was one in Washington. Uh, they're, they're held all aqu across the country, uh, New Orleans, uh, Kansas City, uh, San Francisco, mm -hmm. but uh, first time in Boston. What exactly goes on at these conventions? What would well, you do in, and participate it's in? It's really an opportunity for people who uh, uh, are fond of that show to get together and exchange thoughts and ideas. Uh, we as actors, uh, uh, we um, are afforded uh, a couple of opportunities per day to share our thoughts, why uh, uh, we enjoy that experience with uh, Star Trek, and then we field questions from the people there about uh, 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 aspects that we may not have discussed or specific er areas about Star Trek. Uh, actually, I think the real authorities on uh, the technical areas of Star Trek are those attending rather than us, because uh, they're the ones that are watching Star Trek uh, daily in some areas and uh, on weekends, but, uh, you know, it's been like seven years for us, so uh, I've gotten a little bit fuzzy on the technology. Still shown up here and regularly watched yeah. by me and lots yeah. of people out there. And listening. at this convention, they're showing uh, the uh, Star Trek episodes as well as other science fiction films. There, there's another uh, room set aside for people who sell uh, memorabilia, and other uh, uh, material uh, from Star Trek, old scripts, uh, posters, photographs, etc. So it's a it's a weekend of uh, uh, wallowing in a lot of wonderful nostalgia. Hmm. Let me ask, get, get this question out of the way, the A number one question. I'm sure you get it a million times. Maybe this time I can ask it a little differently. In the seven years since Star Trek has been off television, as far as the new episodes are concerned, do you feel personally that uh, the likelihood of Star Trek returning to the air gets less possible or more possible as the years go on? Well, one definite thing that uh, Paramount's made a commitment to is the return of Star Trek as a uh, feature film, as yeah. a movie on the big screen. However, they've been making that promise for so long, and they've been uh, uh, indicating uh, possible start dates for over a year now. And uh, finally, they did announce a production date, but uh, still they've yet to s uh, select a shooting script, uh, uh, still yet to uh, identify uh, the date on which uh, shooting commences. So uh, I'll believe it when I see it, but uh, they have committed themselves contractually to... Uh, eventually doing a film on uh, Star Trek. So the old sets are still in existence? No, they aren't, as a matter of fact. They're all gone. Uh, they were donated to uh, various uh, institutions. Uh, the bridge set was donated to my old alma mater, UCLA. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, they did not uh, care for it. and they, It aged and warped in the California sun, and uh, so it, it had to be demolished. So uh, the sets, the costume, everything will, be have to, uh, will have to be made from scratch. Uh, and... Uh, uh, Gene Roddenberry has indicated to me that there will be some modifications in the uh, design of the ship. Mm -hmm. And bits and pieces are being sold at Star Trek conventions. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. A lot of uh, little gimcracks and memorabilia items uh, as, uh, associated with Star Trek are sold there. Uh, I wanted to ask you what you personally brought to the character of Sulu. I understand that in the beginning, when the characters were still being fleshed out in the mind of Gene Roddenberry, uh, for example, uh, William Shatner brought a lot to the character of Kirk, and uh, Leonard Nimoy brought a lot to the character of, of Spock. What did you specifically bring from your life into the character of Sulu? Well, I'm something of a collector. Uh, I don't collect the kind of things that uh, Sulu was interested in, but uh, I uh, added that aspect of uh, uh, the characterization of Sulu. Uh, I'm also uh, uh, an outdoorsman. I, I enjoy uh, the outdoors, uh, physical activity, and... Uh, uh, 
fencing was something that I'm, I wasn't into, but uh, I did suggest to the writers that uh, we should make him an active, uh, physical kind of guy. And yeah, that came out in the naked time when you became D'Artagnan. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, that was a lot of fun. That's one of my favorite shows, uh, and particularly because of that. And uh, that's one of the great things about um, a career as an actor. It opens up uh, new uh, aspects that uh, you, know, you wouldn't have gotten into otherwise. Fencing, I knew nothing about until then, uh, but I took uh, a cram course in uh, fencing, <laughs> and, and I developed the love for it. It's a fun uh, uh, physical exercise, a good exercise, and a very graceful one, too. So uh, I've tried to keep it up. Unfortunately, lately, I, I haven't had the chance to. Too many conventions. Mm -hmm. I understand as far as uh, physical exercise is concerned, you enjoy jogging, and uh, we were talking about possibilities of you running in the Boston Marathon Monday. Yeah, I just found out about that uh, this morning when I was checking into the uh, hotel. Uh, the guy checking in next next to me was uh, going to be uh, uh, participating in that, and I said, "Oh, that's great! This is the first time I found out about it before you know before the event actually took place." Usually, I'm watching TV and I see a coverage on uh, the Boston Marathon or uh, in Southern California the Palos Verdes Marathon. But now that I know about it beforehand, uh, I'm trying to find out how to um, register for it and. Uh, to participate. I don't, you know, I really haven't been working out uh, with that in uh, mind, so I don't know how I'll fare, but uh, I'm willing to give the old college try. That's a long distance, 26 miles. 26 I admire anybody miles. who can even run 10. Well, we'll see. Uh, I, I may not finish one. it. <laughs> <laughs> how about if I ask you just one more question, and we'll take some uh, calls from the audience. If you'd like to ask George Takei, who played Mr. Sulu on Star Trek, a question or two, call us at 492-1188, and we'll put George on the line for you. What did you enjoy most? about working on Star Trek for those three years? What did I enjoy most about Star Trek? I think it was really um, the, the uh, people I worked with. Um, Gene was able to gather together a group of uh, interesting people, very uh, friendly, outgoing people, but also people that were involved in a lot of other areas of life beyond uh, just their work. And so uh, in between setups, and the, there, you know, there are many hours that uh, you have to kill on a television series set. Uh, what makes life interesting are the people that, uh, that you have there to share that time with. And uh, Leonard is a guy that's uh, uh, somewhat of a renaissance man, uh, involved in many areas, uh, as are the other people. Uh, uh, Nichelle is a fascinating lady. And, uh, so uh, uh, I think I enjoyed working with uh, that group, that particular group of people most. Mm -hmm. The impression I got was like one big family there for a while. Yeah, uh, and like uh, a normal family, we have we had differences too. But that's what also what made it uh, fun. It wasn't all this phony uh, happiness and light thing that uh, so many fan magazines talk about. Uh, it was lively and stimulating. We had our differences, but the differences that uh, happen in uh, a situation where you all love and respect each other. Hmm. Tell me, when you go to uh, conventions or, or parties or whatever, what's your favorite behind-the-scenes story about Star Trek? Something that maybe none of us has ever heard before. Uh, well, this is one that I've told at a uh, few conventions, uh, uh, so I think some uh, of your listeners may be aware of it. Uh, um, that scope that I had on my console that came up was a rather uh, unwieldy instrument, and it took forever to a, a good hour to set it up before you could uh, let it uh, to, before you could use it uh, coming up. And um, I, you know, I'm conscious of the television uh, shooting schedule and the costs involved, time is important, and also the fact that my last name, spelled T-A-K-E-I, can also look like T-A-K-E-1, take one. <laughs> so I like to get things, you know, right on the first take. And so, um, uh, and the crew knew that, and particularly when uh, that scope was uh, utilized, they knew that I was particularly conscious about getting it right on the first take. So these rascals, they had a way of... Uh, uh, making sure that uh, what I uh, initially intend uh, doesn't work out that way. What I look uh, when I looked into that scope, what I uh, saw was actually a lot of raw lumber, uh, a naked light bulb with a lot of wires attached to it. We uh, rehearsed this particular scene a couple of times and got ready to do uh, a, a take on it, the first take, and uh, I was all keyed up and ready to get it done right. The director said to action, uh, the camera started grinding. I had my first few bits of dialogue with Bill back there, and then a few bits of dialogue with the uh, view screen. Then I looked into the scope, and I was supposed to have a fairly long speech there. When I looked in there, one of the crew people had placed in there a gel, uh, a pull-out centerfold <laughs> photo of a voluptuous young thing in her full glory. And you know what happened to the first take on that one. In the dumper. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a lot of fun with it. 
Ah, Star Trek fans, where are you? George Takei is waiting for a question. 492-1188 if you'd like to ask uh, Mr. Sulu, a.k.a. George Takei, a question. Takei, I'm sorry. Takei, perhaps. right. Takei, yes. Takei is also another Japanese name, uh -huh. but I tell people that uh, Takei, when translated, means expensive, <laughs> and I can be that too. <laughs> One of the things that I'd, uh, I think everybody talks about to this day about Star Trek was what I think you call the believability factor. Everything was uh, just so finely detailed that everything that you experienced watching it on television seemed to be real. What things have, uh, have actually come to pass? I know things like the uh, alert system, the beep system that the, the Enterprise used was picked up by hospitals. Yeah. Well, uh, a great deal of the credit for that belongs to Gene Roddenberry because um, he approached science fiction with a great deal of integrity. He didn't want to just uh, uh, speculate on uh, technology. He, uh, we had um, the Rand Corporation as consultants so that uh, even uh, some of the more bizarre of the uh, technology were rooted in uh, ideas that were within the realm of pro uh, probability so that uh, that uh, medical um, uh, data uh, uh, instrument on top of the uh, uh, bed in uh, sick bay now does exist in fact and I was talking to a scientist uh, oh about a week ago I think uh, and he was telling me about uh, this uh, device that they for lack of a better uh, term they call a teleporter very much like our transporter where they transport objects from one place to another by uh, well I guess uh, simply put molecular uh, disassembly and uh, reassembly there they are experimenting with that, and uh, hmm. uh, who knows, within the next um, few decades, uh, it may be within the realm of uh, uh, possibility. Certainly, they're experimenting with it, and, uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, becoming you know, more uh, probable than uh, when we first uh, saw it on uh, Star Trek. Fascinating. <laughs> it certainly would save costs flying to London and vacations. Ah, yes. Just and transport yourself over there. This Concord uh, thing uh, is causing a lot of controversy. Uh, we can uh, uh, nullify that controversy by developing this teleporter, I think. Hmm. I think we have a phone call. Hang on. Let's All just right. slide over and... Uh... What do you want to do? Fine. Great. Ask your question again. You didn't hear it the first time. Yeah, I'm afraid I didn't hear your question. Uh, is Star Trek going to come back? Star Trek is going to come back. Uh, the only commitment that Paramount's made up to this point is as a uh, feature film. And uh, uh, we still haven't been able to uh, get their commitment on a start date on the project, nor on a, a, a shooting script. There are three scripts now that uh, they're considering. And they have been considering since the beginning of this year, but uh, they haven't made a decision on that. We're hoping that um, once the picture's made uh, and out, whenever that might be, that it's going to be a, a big success, so that that may, creates that momentum for its return as uh, a television series again. And I'm absolutely confident that uh, the film's going to be a big smash box office hit. Yes, it would be. Well, with people like you, it's almost guaranteed. <laughs> okay. Good you. talking to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, George, I want to thank you for coming down this afternoon. How about if we do that passing question after this message? Okay. okay. What we're going to do is we have ten pairs of tickets for this Sunday's Live at Passim show, and uh, I thought that uh, George Takei would ask a trivia question about Star Trek. One for you Trekkies out there, and one for you casual watchers of the program. So we'll have ten pairs, 492-1188, and we'll get to the questions after this message. And there he goes, Mr. Sulu. Back up to his new Starfleet command. 